Hello, Jay. Good evening, Seraph. Uh, do you mind? Isn't this hmm? isn't this quite familiar? Well, yes, it is the room that I killed you in. Ah, uh, no harsh feelings. I only had to go through an excruciating trip in the void. In all seriousness, no. Yes, seriously, yes. So <laughs> let's carry on. Um, do you mind introducing yourself for anybody who might not know who you are? For any reason. Uh, Hi, I'm Geo5TCG, also known as Jay. I'm the co-owner of Nameless and also the former head writer. I wrote the entire sheet of Arc 1 in the span of like 20 minutes. I don't even know how. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, I'm canonically dead, so that's a pog. First one dead, first one alive. What would you know? We're going to start off with a nice, possibly one of the longest ones I have in my list. Um, okay, so the main point is that uh, what ma what gave you the idea? initially to make the story like this. I know that we'd planned on having a small nation on a different server with the same name, but nothing quite like what you've created here. Uh, so what you're describing is uh, Trimont, Seraph. Yes, I still disagree with you on that one. Uh, Trimont was originally planned for this server called the Moonbank SMP. Yes. I had the yes. creation and destruction already in mind, uh, though, like, uh, we basically decided, sh okay, we're going to shift everything away from Moonbug into Nameless, which is now its current state. So what gave me the idea for Primon is I took influence from a large variety of things, such as Wilbur Sutz, Lamanberg, obviously, most people draw, draw connections with that anyways. Uh, I started with Hamilton, and also just personal ideology in my own lens of history, like, uh, the fact that I believe that no nation, like, one of the key things of Trimont was that it could not survive with, exter with exterior forces was based off of like my personal belief that like without in order for a station, nation to be stable, there can't be a, another nation, but eh, like permanent revolution and stuff like that. But in general, like what initially gave me the story of Trimont was Wilbur with Slamanberg. Bush, I quickly changed and morphed it and shaped it around my own beliefs, like my own narrative style, and boom, now we have Trimont. Yeah, I will say, it's it's very visible, um, even in, like, the original um, document you gave me. I mean, I wouldn't read... Is, is it a document? It's more just a piece of paper. But in the it is literally a piece of paper with a, with a sprawling mind map. In the original plan you gave me, the title was just, it was never meant to be. So it's very obvious. It's very easy to see, sort of, connections between... Wilbur Slamander and Tremont. Yeah, of course. Um, of course, when you were explaining the arc to me, whether it was before you gave me the uh, plan or afterwards, you said it was the arc of sacrifice. Explain, like, how what your thought processing about sort of how it was named was. So, for me, my Irish style was I would prefer to centralize on one or two characters. So, in arc one, the two central characters were and Seraph. Yes. With Jay. So the reason it's called Sacrifice is because these two characters were either sacrificed or had sacrificed. So Jay sacrificed his best friend, his own this his own legacy, like the fact that he was his name will be raked through the mud for every past generation due to his actions in order to attempt to ensure peace for his people and his son. Meanwhile, Seraph was the one who was sacrificed in order for Jay's political machinations to come true. However, Jay in the end will pay the ultimate sacrifice by being killed. Yeah, I, I, I will say, perhaps dying might be one of the greatest sacrifices. Yeah, so that to show that like the people how to overthrow this tyrant that Jay was meant to be. Uh, Although, like, Jay canonically was like, was someone people, which is why he didn't just execute Teddy, so. I, I will say, I will say, how you executed, how you did, played out your character, you, you did it very well, but at the same time, nobody knew what, what Jay was thinking or anything like that. C could you give us perhaps some insight as to what his mind was like during this time? Uh, to put it in Two short words, it'll be mental anguish. Uh, Jay was... was a good man. Like, he... he knew that, like... 
he knew that power corrupted. So he knew that if he were to like take power and actually attempt to enact everything and just ensure that his nation would survive, he knew that either he would fail or someone else down the line would fail. So he basically decided, right, I can't afford to let that happen. So he, when he became president, he said he already knew what he, what he had to do. He called Seraph down to his office, let him that Seraph kill him in order to quickly gain power, get emergency powers, enact like enact the emergency powers to effectively conquer the entire server in order to unify everyone against him. Because if people had a unified cause to fight for, they would achieve peace. And Jane knew that. But he also knew that he would have to sacrifice everything to achieve that. So he was constantly stressed, thinking, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? And he was so sorrowful over the fact that he had to do that to the people. In fact, in the journal of the president of Fremont, when he declared war on Glad and Baca, his last lines were, I'm sorry because he knew what he was doing was horrible. And of course, sometimes he was drunk and because of that mental anguish, he was just not in control, which is why when he was drunk, he held Teddy hostage and why when he was drunk, he, well, cannibalized Glass because he was not in control. Uh, not to uh, mention he's uh, a lightweight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was going to note on, um, I had a note down that just something I was gonna note before we finished is like, you're really, like your character is terrific with alcohol, because the only like the only things that cannot be explained, like for any sort of passing reason to be good, it, it, everything that you've done while drunk. Yeah, not to mention, <laughs> I still one of the biggest motivators for drunk Jay was because he was playing. He was basically fully playing into the role of the tyrant. Like, he followed Machiavelli's words with the prince and decided that fear would, would be the greatest motivator and basically said, all right, let's do this. Fair. It's something that ties back to this room here, actually. Um, after, the, after the election event, you said that I'd cut you off from, like, a massive monologue you were gonna make. Ah! <laughs> How do, how Jake can never get his monologues off. You always die before you speak. Yeah. Like, okay, so for during the election, after election, basically when he basically effectively dared Seraph to kill him, he was going to give a speak, speech about it. He was going to give a monologue saying, you wouldn't dare because you're weak. You, you, That's why you're not fit to rule. You're not fit to be here. You can't realize that. For every game of chess, which is what politics is, you need to have to make righteous sacrifices, even if it's at the cost of your own people. Because for the long-term benefit, it's what matters, not the short-term cost. Is that fair? Yeah. Um. Would you, would you mind would you mind giving us a like a portion or a small amount of what you're gonna say? Oh Christ! This is so long ago. Okay, I think it's like this. You wouldn't dare to kill me, Seraph. Me, we both know this. Why? Because you're weak. You've never had the gall to stand up for what you believed in. You claim that I will become a tyrant, a dictator, and oppress our people. But that's because you don't realize. Sometimes what I do is necessary. There is always a necessary evil, Seraph. Every game of chess there must be a sacrifice made. And for the short-term benefit, for the short-term cost of the people's personal liberties and people being ripped from their homes, we have the long-term benefit of order, unity, and peace. But you wouldn't understand that, sir. That's why you're not president. So, you want to stop me? Then kill me. Do it. It'll be the end of both of us. <clears throat> that was basically it. Now I wish I'd given you your chance. Oh, that Gosh. was amazing. Oh, I regret killing you now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, whatever happened, 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 happened. It doesn't really matter. Can't go back on it now. The, the, the way the are. answers to your satisfaction. Sorry, I just had to throw in a Hamilton reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That that was uh, very out of nowhere. Um, 
uh, are, are, are quick. Well, you, this could be a quick question, or it could be a very long question, depending on how you think. Uh, how how uh, how do you think about how the arc ended? How do I think about the arc ended? Of course, you quite you wrote how it ended, and like, of course, you had control over how it ended. But like, are you happy? Yeah, no, I'm more than happy with how the arc ended. It's just like, I do have some regrets. E.g., I was not get, able to give off two monologues. Uh, I forgot to say one or two lines, but that was entirely my fault. Like, yeah, obviously, I do have some regrets in that, like, I didn't get off to say those monologues and lines. But otherwise, I have no regrets to how the arc ended. I loved how this arc went. I saw, like, with this arc, I saw, like, so many talented people join the SMP. I got to see their amazing art. I got to see their acting. I got to make these friends. Like, it's, it's, with, with just the arc in mind, everyone played their roles well. Like, I have to especially commend Baka, who actually did really good acting. I have to commend Teddy for writing the entire ball. I have to commend Celestial for doing his job, even though sometimes it was scuffed looking at you, Seraph. But otherwise, I would have to say everyone did their best part, and I'm so glad they were here. Otherwise, Nameless would not be Nameless. Which also means Nameless will basically would not be scuffed, but hey, let's not talk about that part. I, I have I have a follow-up question listed down that if you could change something, anything about the arc, in retrospect, what would it be? And I have a feeling you've you you just answered that already, but by like you missed some lines, uh, the general some amount of the scuffedness, uh, and of course your two big monologues that you of course missed. Yep, still annoys me. But yeah, no, that was basically it. Like I don't really have any regrets when it comes to this arc. I I will leave off with um one random question that I threw in at the end. What is what is what is Tribbins obsession with axolotls? Like you <laughs> formed a religion around it. Tell me about okay, that. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh the reason that axolotls were like such a big factor was because this server dropped not even a week after uh the 1.17 update dropped, right? Like we like the axolotls were almost were completely brand new. They were adorable, right? Yeah. Now, little known yeah. fact about Trimon, uh, because nobody uses it these days, is we have a cage spider farm. That farm also doubled as an axolotl and glow squid farm because both of them spawned there naturally. So we end up having a bunch of axolotls that we just like we all like said, okay, we're all gonna get one, right? Because axolotls are adorable. Yeah. So what what would happen later on is we decided, okay, axolotls are protected because they're too adorable to kill. Fair. After that, we decided, oh, hey, you know how we're fun in this state? Well, might as like, what is the one thing we can all agree on? Axolotls are adorable. Bam, state animal. Uh, so that would be that's how axolotls became our state animal. But like, uh, and why did the Holy Order do axolotl form? Uh, that was because we had someone called Dot join the server. We had a nice discussion. We basically said axolotl are state animal, and then I jokingly said, you know what? We don't have a religion in Trimont. Let's make that our religion. And that's how it came, came to be. You just the black salt was so rare. Yeah, no, we literally just made it a joke. We agreed on it. And Dot and basically said, look, I'm president, so I can't be Pope. I thought you might be Pope. And that's how Dot became Pope, Pope of the Holy Order of Black Salt. And Nan basically said, yeah, but I want to be a priest. So we said, yeah, be a priest. And that's how it formed. Oh, that's amazing. We even have like the Axel Alt Anthem, but I can't really sing right now because my throat is sort of dead. But I'm sure that if you were to talk to Dot, they would gladly sing it for you. I believe that's in the uh, the Trimmint channel. If I can find it, I'll uh, I'll have it in the video somewhere. No, it is in the Trimmon uh, channel. It is. But yeah, no, that is how the Holy Order of the Axel Alt formed. It was literally just, hey, you know how this exists? Why not make it a religion? We can make a religion out of this. Yes, that was a Bill Worse reference. Yeah. That was already it. I'm going to leave off with a question that I didn't put in the document. Um, uh, we could talk about um, regrets, like not talk not getting um, the, the stuff like that, the monologues in and monologues. such. 
what was the biggest blunder that we left? Uh, please exp- please elaborate. Something that wasn't meant to happen, that somehow ended up canon anyway. Uh, we're not talking well, about the thorns thing because that 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 was too stupid. Uh, okay, so something that wasn't meant to be canon but ended up canon anyways. Uh, ooh, that's a good question because most of what we decide as canon is like is like we already decided it will be canon. Like the planet, I'm such I, I can't English. Most of what we decided will be canon, like we all agreed on. So there isn't really much that I would say like was a blunder. Like, of course, we have the memes of Nime being fo- both in and out of existence at the same time. Schrodinger's Nime, Jay being homeless, uh, Jay being secretly an Axolotl, which we don't talk about. Uh, that's, you know, I, that's I never heard thing. of that one. <laughs> no, that's you know that's a whole different thing about that. About that's a whole different thing now about like Trimont, which I'm so salty I didn't actually get to do because I was busy. Uh, actually, no, that's another regret I have actually. Uh, Cobb being executed for Uwu. That, uh, that, I think that's the best. I think that's the funniest one. Uh, Glap canonically being eaten by Jay because he was drunk and hungry. Fair. Uh, Jay trying to tame Teddy with bones. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, that, and then when we no, caught that, you, no. and then we put no. you in prison, we did detention box up. Like, how do you like these bones? No, and then the fact that like we, jo- I jokingly gave them Serco bones, and they're like, "Oh, Serco bones!" I'm like, "Yeah, no, they're like the off brand of the off brand," and they threw it back at me and just saying, "Ew." <laughs> I didn't actually know how they reacted. I never heard how they reacted to that. No, I literally said, "Look, I'm sorry. We're out of bones made in China because we never had any. That because I forgot to restock them, so we got Serco bones instead. I don't know where they came from, but they just exist. So here, I'm like, "Ew." Uh, what else? Uh, actually, I think that's like all the cannon jokes we have. Uh, besides, like, Glad almost dying to cheese. Yeah. Yeah, we don't talk about why, why that exists. It's just, it's just actually, this is a thing. Actually, no, no, there's another thing, there's another thing. Uh, in canon, uh, a Rick Pro machine is a crime against humanity as it is a psycho- as it is a, mach- a tool of psychological warfare. Yes, yes, I, 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 I know about this. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, there isn't what I would call blunders, I just call them jokes. Just, just like little, things not to be taken seriously. Little funnies. Yeah, otherwise nameless will not be nameless. Again, it has to be scuff, otherwise it's not nameless. I'm gonna. Uh, uh, sorry, I saw a question um, from from a different listing I have, but um, I have a feeling it would suit here, seeing as I never actually asked. What was your favorite part of the last arc? Oh, my favorite part of the arc. Oh, that is a good question. Uh, I think I'll just say it like this. Uh, the elections was was my was probably the blandest part. Uh, the inaugurations was the very was like the thing that started it all, in my opinion. Uh, the deck, uh, celestial uh, doing that whole thing was uh, one of the more conflicted parts of the arc because it was not planned at all. Uh, yeah, that's came out like, nowhere. Our, yeah, that was, but it still fit in because it was completely improv, and I love that. Uh, the de- declaration of war on Baka gave a lot of funnies, especially like the house always wins. This is my house, not anymore. <laughs> I love that uh, quote. Uh, we then we have like Jay holding Teddy as hostage, which was like a very interesting part. Again, had a lot of banter, such as getting the boat shot. I'm not a child, you are to me. Which, fun enough, wasn't even planned because Celestial is actually my child. Yeah, that just it came out of nowhere. Yeah. You're just like, you know uh, what? This works. Again, like a lot of this. It's, like it's jokes. Like again, like Celestial's canonically half weed brownie, but we don't talk about that. Cobb's canonically canonically half corn. Again, we don't talk about that. Uh, Flashy is adopted. Again, we don't talk about it. But like, uh, like every part of the arc, I think went really well. But if I have to pick, it would either be just before my execution, where like my where like we, I got to do a lot of dialogue again because I love dialogue, or the ball actually. I will say, what I know of the ball, I never actually fully watched the stream. Um, it was so well put together. 
yeah, like that's why I entrusted Teddy with handwriting. But like, I'll be quite honest. Like, uh, we didn't really have much action in this arc because it's mostly dialogue. So if I were to put in a comparison, Dream SMP will be more Spielberg. We would be more Tarantino. We're more focused on the dialogue than the action. More story based than actual fighting. Yeah. Like, yeah, we had some fighting. It's just, you know, like Jay was there and he would slaughter anyone, therefore, we couldn't really do much action. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 combat wouldn't work out too well because it's like. If it's a resistance, it would, it against, would just be. Like, it, would just be it would just be Techno versus the Butcher Army again, all over again. Yeah, except like. There is also, no Carl. There is no Carl. You also had like some of the most powerful or some of the most best combat people, like the likes of Cobbs, on your side. And we don't talk about where that where your armor came from, Seraph. In case anyone asks, Celestial mine for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yes. Right. <laughs> I've reached the end of my thing, and I think, um, I think we've got enough, um, sort of information to sort of... Then may I end off with the monologue I was going to give, so that will give during the course? Yes, before, um, Celestial so, um, kindly cut you off. And he was so bad at trying to kill me, <laughs> you... I pulled the trigger myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could have just waited for him to hit you again. Nah. <laughs> Too impatient for your own death. So, uh, uh, let's begin. Don't you realize, sir, everything's your fault. If you had not killed me during the inauguration for your own sake of power, we would not be in this situation today. Don't you realize that whenever you show up, something goes wrong for the lives of others. You intruded on a democratic election which caused a chain of events to lead to all of this to happen. You intervened during Celestial and Glasshall conflict which caused Glass to become under suspicion of, of working with you, which caused Glass to implicate Angel. Not to mention you also implicated Celestial during that time. Don't you realize everything's your fault? You caused all of this. You have no one to blame but yourself. And now look at you. You're intruding on a trial for someone who attempted to assassinate a leader. And I was going to be merciful. I had no reason to think they were colluding with you. I was just simply going to give them community service. Because I may be a dictator, but I'm not a tyrant. I know people make mistakes. But you clearly don't. You seem to repeat the exact same mistakes. Uh, Pigrove, yes. Uh, Pigrove is Jay's alter ego. Uh, no said. So, Pigrove is an alliance Jay uses in order to inform Seraph of everything. Uh, he uses it to inform Seraph of any events, any works against him. Because again, Jay doesn't want to be ruler, he wants to be dead. And that Seraph will play the role of the hero to ensure peace because everyone will be unified against Jay. So he uses the role of PR to send Seraph messages saying, hey, this is your moment to strike. Note how the one time PR didn't send a message and Seraph decided to intervene was the one time Seraph seemed like the villain by killing his son. Yeah. I mean, I will say my intervening on the course even though that was advised, seemed pretty well, outlandish. No, because no, because nobody knew what sentence Jay was going to give besides Jay. Fair. Jay, Jay, once, Jay was there, he said, oh yeah, this is a military tribunal. He may, tried to make the trial seem as unfair as humanly possible. So don't worry. That was planned. We, of course, won't talk about how... Um... How PR or pig rope got um, the name. Okay, it should be fairly obvious by now. PR, yeah, pig yeah. in a rope. Who else could I be referring to? Yeah, if... if, if Critical. If, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty... Yeah, we, we, that's not, we won't talk to that. We'll, we'll leave that for people to figure out. 
figure out is that they didn't realize to within two seconds of me saying the name. And no, for people who are actually daft, no, I was not referring to Pegaco. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, why do people put signs and bills they're not even meant to know about? Who knows? Oh yeah, also, uh, for anyone wondering why there's a thing called Hell Chicken, uh, in the early days of the SMP, for some reason, there was a random chicken in a nether highway. Eventually, it died, so I just took its carcass, named it Hell Chicken, and slapped it into an item frame. I've been in F1 mode the whole time, I didn't notice its name. <laughs> and also, uh, there is another thing in this. So there's a hidden chest on the which shows that Jay could have killed everyone. Quite powerful. Yeah. Wait, why... What is the need for that much obsidian? Uh, that was Jay's master stroke. In which case, if you did, if you attempted to resist, which thank God most people didn't, I would wall off your entire city with obsidian and just put twenty withers in it. Fair enough. Right. Um. I would say this conversation has been enlightening. Now, for anyone wondering what happened to all my stuff, yes, Seraph has it. Bush, the thing is, he, he, uh, I always have backups. Yeah, he, he's very, very good at preparing for things. In case, like, the, the pretty much one stack of end crystals, enough obsidian to fill an inventory, nine stacks of obsidian, the fact that I have another pair of god armor and tools wasn't enough to prove that. Yeah. <laughs> And I've been inactive for the past couple of weeks. Yeah, you, you really busy. have been. Let's, let's, while we're finishing up, we may as well take a walk, right? Yep. But it's, it's... One last time. Oh, it is the middle of night. That's gonna go well. I have a bed down there. Give me a sec. Awesome. Well, it's getting dark, isn't it? Oh, wow. Render Distance 3 looks beautiful. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm quite happy with how things went. Yeah, obviously I'm happy as well. It's a good arc. It went well. Now to now for uh now if we were with each other IRL, I'd offer Sarah a toast and say to future to future arts. Well if we're not. I mean you can say that nonetheless. A uh, toast to say... any future. Uh, Ahem. A toast to Teddy's writing and future acts, even if I'm not there. So, one last. I, I need to stop singing. That will get you DMCA'd until I'm living. <laughs> I, I'm sure with, with how completely out of tune that was, we're fine. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, relax, have a drink with me one last time. But yeah, Trimont is. I think the, the inarguably the magnum opus of nameless. <laughs>